<laughs> so their backpacks were packed and I need to go ahead and clear their binders off so that they can do their binder work this morning. I'm pretty sure I didn't wipe them off yet. Yeah, I didn't. So um, because these are in the page protectors, um, we use our Expo markers to fill them out. So every night I try to go in and um, clean them off so that they can use them the next day. So that's what I'm getting ready to do. Hi guys, it's Q&A time again. I was doing work just like last time and trying not to get frustrated. <laughs> So I thought I would take a break and answer some of your questions. I have all of my questions on my phone just like last time and maybe I can get through maybe five or six more questions today. So um, the first one is where is your watercolor palette from? So I have two watercolor palettes and these are just the basic $5 ones. I think the brand is Artist Loft. Yeah, the ones from Michaels. Last year I picked up a ton of that Artist Loft brand and I found that I definitely do not like the um, brushes. The brushes are horrible. All of the bristles or whatever you want to call all of the fibers will come out on your painting and they're not they're not great. But these watercolors are just five dollars a piece and they work just fine for them. As they move along, I like to invest in better quality supplies. So my oldest son has all of the good stuff. The other watercolor palette that I have, and I've mentioned this before, is this one. So this one was actually gifted to my oldest when we went to go and visit the artist Vanessa Brantley Newton. I don't even know what the brand is called. It's Swiss made. It's Karen Dosh. I, I, I don't know. I know I, I ruined that, but this is the watercolor palette that he has. It's nice and messy, just like I like it. He enjoys using these. They're much richer colors. I mean, all of your hopes and dreams come true with this watercolor palette, but when they are starting off, they just need something super simple. So this Artist Loft one does just fine. My next question is, do you still regularly use your bullet journal? And the answer to that is no. And um, I think that what you may be referring to is my homeschool journal. I don't really, I don't actually have a bullet journal. Um, so the only one that I can think of besides my planner um, would be the journal that I normally um, paint and uh, write out my homeschool thoughts and our progress and things like that. And the reason that I haven't is because I lost it. <laughs> I couldn't find it for the longest and every time I wanted to sit down and journal and write out my homeschool thoughts and things, I couldn't find it. <laughs> so I just recently found it which made me very very happy but I am quite a bit behind in um, and I need to catch up in my homeschool journaling. I also kind of adapt a bullet journal type of style in my passion planner. So, you know, I am journaling just not in my actual bullet journal that I started out with because I lost it. How do you stay energized? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I don't. I don't. Um, I am a very mm, moody person in that I have to be inspired to do something. Um, and I'm working on that. I want to be a lot more even keel. Um, so I have very low energy days and very high energy days. And so what I try to do is on my high energy days, I try to do as much as I possibly can. And then to make up for the fact that I'm not going to do much on my low energy days. Um, however, it's worked just fine for me and I am trying to do better and I'm trying to do better with my eating and exercising and things like that but I haven't done well at all I haven't done well so I don't I don't stay energized I just try to take advantage of the high days <laughs> so sorry I'm, I, I'm not gonna be of any help 
over here in that area. Now what I have found is that, you know how the word says, all things work together for the good of those who love him. I really do believe that to be true because um, while I can be a very low energy person at times, it really has lended itself to my kids just doing their thing um so that's why i create so many things in our homeschool where the kids can do them without me so that when i am having very low energy days things still move on like normal with them um and things don't come to a halt just because i am low energy yeah so th that's my answer to that <laughs> I am just being really helpful today. Um, how do you put on a happy face when mama is just plain tired and burnt out? Girl. <laughs> Girl. Okay, so I have what I like to call my substitute plans around here. So whenever I am really tired and really, really burnt out, I pull out my camera and it helps me to gain a different perspective. It helps me to slow down a bit. Um, so that is what I do. Um, and I have a lot of different default plans that kick into motion whenever I'm feeling just completely burnt out. Um, and I like that. I like that a lot. So I have like playlist on Netflix. I have prepared playlist on YouTube. Um, and then with that is when we use things like more heavily that we have that we don't normally use on a consistent a regular basis like Osmo or um, some of the activity kits they'll do things like that um, or a lot of times we'll just read um, and that's just kind of what I do and I think another thing that has helped me a lot that I've learned to do is I try not to think much when I'm tired and burnt out I don't allow myself to come to the conclusion that I'm such a horrible homeschool mom. Yeah, I just, I try not to allow myself to make any type of decision or think any type of thing. I just kind of give myself space to breathe and look forward to the new mercies in the morning. Because it's real. <laughs> I have a mug in my shop that should be posted by now. If not, it's coming soon. But um, this one I've always held on to. It's on my mug it says, I like my mercies new and my faith strong. And that's kind of how I feel. Faith is, faith is, like faith embodies everything that you don't see and that you don't feel. So I, I like to believe that on those, days, on those days when I'm really tired and burnt out, God is working. Um, so I just kind of give it to him. And I mean, every time they come back to me with some kind of plan they made or thing that they thought of or thing that they engineered or, you know, they're making forts. And I feel like those are the good days. And that's what I choose to believe. When I'm tired and burnt out, I believe that, you know, God is working those are the good days and my faith is strong my mercies are new in the morning <laughs> so that's what I do and I also ask for quite a bit of help um it was hard it's, it's a journey to ask for help it's hard um but I've learned that it's so necessary so if I need Brian to take them then he'll do that if I need to ask the grandparents to come over and take them out to dinner then I'll do that and then there's those days where you can't do that and that's not available and you just ride it out. <laughs> you abandon the plans, you pick something that you like to do together and you wait for those new mercies in the morning or next week. <laughs> I have two more. What did you do before you were a stay at home mom? Okay, so what did I do before I was a stay at home mom? I worked as a dental assistant. Um, when I graduated from college, uh, my plan was to go off to dental school. And so I got married, I moved, and I started studying for the debt. And it just wasn't working out well. I spent quite a bit of time studying for the debt, went to go and take it, and I just, I could not think. Like, <laughs> like I was not even a smart person that day. I don't know what happened, but, um, 
after I finished it, I came home and something inside me just felt like I wasn't ready. So I actually went to the dentist for a regular dentist appointment and um, the dentist needed help. And we ended up talking about how I was supposed to go to dental school and all this other stuff. I won't get into that full story today, but um so i ended up working as a dental assistant um and i did that until i was pregnant with my oldest cameron um and it was good it was good because i got to see the ins and outs of the dental field and i realized i didn't really want to do it it actually ended up working out so after that um, I started substituting and from substituting I got a permanent position as a teacher's assistant so that is what I did I was um, a teacher's assistant in a special education classroom and I really loved it <laughs> I really loved it so uh, that's what I did until my oldest was born and then we decided that I was going to stay at home so yeah <laughs> My last question is, how did you get comfortable putting your art out there for others? Okay, so this was a really interesting question. <laughs> and um, I am a very creative person and I have a lot of things that I like to put my hands to. What I enjoy the most is photography, video, but I love painting, I love drawing. I love all those things and I think that um, I remember clearly after you know I had decided we had decided that I was going to stay at home what was I going to do with this life I, I don't know this one's a hard one I'm stumbling a little bit <laughs> basically I had this idea of the gifts that I had the things that I loved doing and what I wanted to do with them and I just really realized that there was no way I was going to get to that or get better and get closer to it if I didn't use it more. Um, and it's terrifying because I absolutely hate <laughs> everything that I kind of put out there. I really... I. Do not like my videos. Um, I oftentimes am extremely critical of my photography, um, but I am committed to the process and to getting better and I can't get better if I don't put it out there and if I don't do it more and if I don't um, grow in those areas. So I'm not comfortable. I just refuse not to use it. I love creativity and putting my hands to things too much to be to not do it so these were all really good questions thank you guys so much for these questions anyway my battery is going to die I have many more questions left, but I'll wait till the next video. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you're subscribed, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.